Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Hello everyone. Uh, this is another Arabic tutorial. In this uh, tutorial, I'm going to show you how to model a reinforcement concrete frame uh, using Abacus software. So, uh, this is the tutorial uh, outlines. So, the model is uh, uh, two stories and uh, the span length is two meters from the center to center column. And each story is 1.3 meters wide from the middle of the stories and the second is tall so uh, mostly for the simulation we will do some scaling to get uh, uh, the result faster uh, so this is the column and this is the column 200 by 200 and we have two <coughs> uh, rebar hit in each corner uh, totally four rebar in each corner and we have one uh, stress and the uh, strap size is this one and we will <coughs> distribute these uh, straps uh, at uh, 100 millimeter uh, length and this is the column is 100 <coughs> 200 by 240 and so we uh, then we will apply a gravity loop uh, to the top of the uh, uh, columns and the second we will apply the push overload in this direction so we go to uh, one more thing uh, we use concrete 25 megapascal so and the rebar is using q35 uh, 3235 245 so i'm going to abacus here is an abacus so i can go to a uh, cold frame so the entire frame is just i want to uh, use 3d solid elements and using one section uh, let me use it a large grid. Uh, uh, we can draw by using line, uh, rectangles, or points. So um, uh, let me quickly do it using a rectangle. So I'm going to use one rectangle like this, and the second rectangle I'm going to use like this. Uh, let me measure it. It is better. It is better to use uh, like this, and like this. So first, uh, let me the total height. And the total height is. Uh, I can measure it from top to bottom. Uh, 2064. Go back to here. 264. So we brought it down, and, and the thickness is 200. Okay, and I'm gonna delete these parts for a while because. And now I can. I go to select this, select this, and I go to do copy. A copy and select uh, this, select this one, and then I can uh, use uh, zero zero uh, start point zero, and then I want to push it to. Uh, so it's uh, usually it will take from middle point so I'm going to give it 2000 millimeter uh, okay now I'm gonna take okay uh, just uh, one more here but before let me clean this one okay. uh, going to line and uh, this line and I want to measure this line is exactly the same. Uh, so the total 200, 100 this side, 100 this side, it will become 200, 200, 2000 millimeter. So now I can uh, uh, I can um, draw one more here and I can take this one is 240 and I can copy this one as well if I go to copy copy 
select it one and uh, this the first point is become zero zero and so and I'm gonna bring uh, in the X is zero and the Y is minus uh, this one so exactly and this one so we're gonna enter and it comes to this area so if I go to measure this point to this point is exactly the same uh, but it is from the center to center so we should uh, move it 100 millimeter uh, or I can delete this and I can copy again uh, copy and this one and I want to bring zero zero so that should be 12 20 so instead of sorry it should be okay and do and then uh, again copy select this one and zero zero and zero minus 12 20 and so the size is okay now we have everything is uh, done and uh, out of the beam is 230 now we can uh, we can go to uh, trim we should uh, trim this region because we want to extrude so other part is okay so I'm going to delete this one as well and I'm gonna oh, hey, this one is extra and okay so the depth is 200 equal to the depth of the column and now we create the frame like this so it's very simple then we can uh, create some uh, position uh, um, I can use just using this point selecting this one and so we created this one and also using this point and yeah so now here is the beam and column uh, quite nice and now we can go to create uh, rebar uh, the rebar or longitudinal rebar is 10 millimeter 10 mm i can use a uh, wire and planer so i can use uh, zero zero and then i can use zero uh, this is the total height for the column so i want to reduce 20 bottom 20 top so then 2600 millimeter so zero 2600 And here is so again uh, we have for column and for beam we call the bar beam uh, beam the same and this is equal uh, 220 so 200 2160 uh, zero zero and 2160 And here we created the rebar as well and the next thing is the straps we have two straps we call column straps and the column straps is uh, we can get zero 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 and we can give 160 by 160 so this is that column and next uh, is called uh, beam stirrups wraps using the rectangle and zero zero so the height is the weight is uh, 200 200 so then it's become x 116 and in the top 220 uh, 200 This is for beam. Now the modeling is finished. We're gonna go to the uh, material. So I already have some material in my library. Uh, this is called Concrete CDP25.
and I'm using still still left. Let me use still two thousand uh, three uh, two three five, which is very po popular uh, Chinese steel uh, material. You can get this data from the internet, and Here is, and I can go to here and select this 230. So we can see what is inside. In this CDP uh, is elastic, and this is the modulus elasticity, and these are the concrete damage parameters. This is the compressive damage data, so in a maximum 25 megapascal, the tension, and this is the concrete tension damage you can see here. That's well. And this is the steel, and you can use here elastic and other parameters. Uh, you can get this from the uh, from website or some manufacturing steel okay. materials. You can get now. We create this one is called concrete, so the entire beam column is same uh, material. We need one concrete damage, and now we're gonna call it uh, longitudinal. A rebar. So we need totally uh, two kind of rebar. So one is called beam I'm using truss element uh, using steel. So the area of 10 is 78.5 uh, millimeter square millimeter, and this is called straps. Straps is uh, the same material and it's 28.35 millimeter so you can use pi d squared by 4 and now I can assign the straps d3 bar longitudinal rebar and this is also longitudinal rebar and frame frame is uh, this is frame concrete and the last one is column strips you can use also beam uh, but you have to define our orientation so everything is done we can go to the assembly and i want to bring the first uh, frame here and I want to uh, move it. Uh, I want to take this point to zero zero. And okay. And next, I want to bring. Uh, I want to bring the. Uh, I can uh, select this one. Remove. Remove it. And I'm going to bring the column straps. So this is the column straps, and I'm going to rotate this using, uh, yeah, using this uh, direction. Okay, and here, yeah. and now I can bring the uh, column rebars, and rebar ten is the for the columns. So it's exactly in the uh, zero zero, and I'm going to use this function. Uh, this is uh, 160, and this is also 160. So I'm going to change the direction to this side, and it's okay, and we are done here. So now, first, let me take this one from zero zero, and then zero. Then I'm going to ask it. Uh, 40 millimeter in the top of Y and then OK. Now it's OK and we want to populate this rebar by using 100 millimeter size. One hundred millimeter and this will be 
0. Now I can extend to end. Uh, I think this is enough. Okay, and uh, we finished one, and uh, we can uh, duplicate this uh, using this function. And exactly, we give uh, 2000 millimeter. 2000 millimeter. Okay, now we have one more thing, and that uh, we can go to the, this direction, and I'm going to move. Uh, select this uh, just uh, the top three parts not uh, okay uh, going to be zero uh, select axis and zero zero and I'm going to zero and just going to be put it a uh, little 20 centimeter 20 millimeters top now we are done here and we want to select all and I want to bring everything here, everything here, and just taking this point, putting to this here. So the next, I'm going to use this, this one, and in this time, in this time, I want to exactly put it in the x minus 20, and in the z also positive 20. So I'm going to take that point from 0, 0, yeah, from 0, 0, and it'll be uh, minus 20, and 0, and positive 20. So it's in the center of the column. So like this, you can uh, put, if I go to use uh, transparent, and you can see here, this is the rebar, and if I go to use uh, some assembly to B and you can exactly see the same. Next, I want to bring the uh, beam rewards straps. So I'm going to select this one and select everything to remove. Remove it. Now we can go to remove and we're going to bring the um, beam straps. Uh, this is a beam, a beam, a beam straps, and I want to rotate this by using uh, this angle. Uh, it's 90 degrees like this and here I want to bring called beam report so this is the location is same and I want to populate this also uh, using uh, one is 200 and yeah one is 200 and this one and this one is 160 if I go to here you can select here like this <coughs> Now, uh, if I go here to add the frame, add, and you can see, we should uh, give the, uh, the straps from this area. So, so this side is, we want to push 20 millimeter this side, the entire uh, things, and then adding the rebars in this area. I'm gonna go to uh, again and remove this one. So the first is let me uh, let me uh, <coughs> I can uh, shift this first. Shift uh, the depth of the column is 200, so I'm gonna shift it 200. So zero and just giving 200. So we brought it here, and now what we're gonna do is select all, and just giving again zero, and this time is giving 20. Uh, so in case if I go to that this direction, and you can see, 
is correct so uh, now we'll go back here and I want to populate this ribbon uh, so we don't consider the uh, um, more rebar in the uh, in the near to the joint and but we consider uniform 100 millimeter so let's go 100 this is off so this is until here is correct okay I'm gonna uh, go back here and we'll go back here and we can see this is okay the rebar uh, adjustment is okay so what we're gonna do is uh, we can go here and 3d and we can see the location uh, now I should move this one to there we can select this one and select uh, this one and control and I want to turn off that this one so I'm going to select this one selecting zero zero I want to put this in this height so if I go back to AutoCAD to see the height is from that point to here 14 1440 now I can uh, take uh, so called endpoint zero and four four this. Oh, so that top is gone. So I'm gonna back to here. So here I'm gonna consider that that is two, which is less than. Okay, and it's correct. So now I want to uh, give the cover. Still, it's not okay. So uh, we already giving 20 millimeters here, and we want to give 40 instead of. And I'm gonna control C and control C. Then I'm gonna select here, and what we're gonna do is to uh, in the 3D uh, we wanna bring uh, 20 millimeter this side, 40 millimeter bottom, and other side is okay. So in zero. And we want to bring it uh, Z0, X0, Y minus 40, uh, and a Z um, positive 20. You can see it's inside of the inside of the beam. So now this is uh, exactly what we expect, and I can. Uh, Turn on again, and this time uh, using this one, so linear pattern, and select again, and going to be uh, one, uh, three, twenty, and using uh, the y-axis, so the center to center, and this is zero. So this is quite large. Uh, I'm not sure why. Uh, so this should be 100 12 20 so that's exactly the same location so now you can see uh, we provided in the same range. So I'm going to add everything together and you can see we created the beam column friends so now we finished here we want to go to step I uh, want to go to step in the step uh, we can uh, provide the one gravity load and the second is push overload so we bought considering the static analysis you can also use static analysis uh, static risk uh, dynamic implicit dynamic explicit any of them is okay it's depending to your problem and you can see which uh, solution solver can give your uh, result properly and accurately so in suppose this tutorial i'm going to use static so i can Alt GV, and this is what it means I want to apply a gravity load. So I'm considering uh, the nonlinear geometry, and I'm using this function that can uh, give me some 
stability for to my prop and now so i give 100 so applying the load and we don't need uh, any output from this one so that means we also consider the p delta uh, p delta effects and when you're here so no need for me i'm not interested to have any output in this one okay and just suppose we have now one and there's also a second step is called pushover pushover using the same and i'm increasing this one to 10 millisecond so the 10 second i'm gonna ask it to give me 10,000 and giving 0 0.1 second and giving 1 e minus 15 and the maximum i want one and using the same and okay so uh, here uh, now I want to transfer this to uh, to the right side which I want to use the uh, pushover and uh, this one I also want to right side and okay but before this let me create some uh, uh, some reference point uh, but before reference point, let me go to the part, do one more uh, partition. I want to consider partition here and creating a actuator or the loading support in this area. Um, considering this one and using this one and selecting this point and using this one. So this is what I created here and I'm going to back to the here and if this is a point I want to consider center of point this one and one this one and one here uh, this is uh, okay one more thing uh, I want to show you here uh, here So I created some points here and I'm gonna give one more and I'm giving this point and I'm going minus 100 so now I'm gonna go to create some reference point so reference point one two three and this point uh, I want to say one thing that uh, in a frame uh, so we will apply some gravity load in that gravity load we want to determine the actual force or the reaction force in the bottom of uh, these two uh, uh, column in case if this is equal then the work is okay otherwise that's wrong so just we will do this one uh, for our verification which is very simple so but go to step again and then I should create one more gravity and I want to considering last increment which is uh, we don't have contact okay okay and in this one I want to edit I want to consider the concrete failure damage and also scholar degradation factors This one, and also we can go to state field variables using this one. And in the output uh, here now, uh, but before this, let me introduce some reference point, some set. So I'm going to call the uh, reaction force. We can call it. So selecting this point and selecting this point so this is the reaction we want to uh, take the sum of these uh, two equal to the total applied load should be total applied load. so and the second is going to be create called uh, uh, displacement so the displacement is this horizontal points okay
Okay, now here I want to create uh, uh, in a, this one and going to using reaction force. Uh, reaction force and I'm going to call this is not this one, it should cleanse it and it's called reaction force. And reaction force uh, here going to use RDF2 which is the vertical one and I can create uh, that every increment or let me every increment of five make a little faster okay and now here in a pushover we want to consider everyone and using this displacement so here i want to consider the uh, reaction force in the horizontal which is equal the shear force and this is the u2 which is the displacement of the top uh, roof or B column. Now we finished in this step and we're going to interaction. So the first interaction is uh, let me uh, remove the, I remove the column and I'm going to uh, create a seed seed and I'm going to call it uh, rebars. So the, tit the total rebars is set. Uh, the total rebar is set, and I should turn off. And this this one is not including the rebar. So now I can go to create an embedded region uh, for the uh, interaction between the concrete and rebar and I can get the seed uh, rebars and the second is called select region and I can uh, go to add and select this one uh, select this one and this one So we selected these uh, concrete frames and I'm going to give, okay. So the next is we want to create some coupling uh, for the location giving up, uh, vertical loads and also uh, creating the reaction force and the split. So I'm going to call first one, COPO1. Uh, it's going to be COP1, COP1. So the COP1 is going to be displacement, the control point and I'm going to select this node region and selecting this surface. Okay. So the next one is if I use uh, sometimes they will give error because he, this node is already uh, have one uh, uh, one uh, we called uh, slav nodes or as a work as a slav nodes or master node. So next time it will be some problem. So what's the uh, solution? Uh, we can we can use this surface and uh, apply the uh, instead of the uh, concentrate radical load, we can uh, ask uh, give the pressure instead of the load instead of concentrate radical load. Or we can uh, create a small partition in this area and then. Uh, make some space between these two uh, nodes. So there will be some error. Uh, and this one is no. So I'm considering that uh, let's uh, apply the load uh, as a pressure. And in the bottom is need to uh, define a true coupling. So I'm going to coupling and I can uh, select this coupling and node region and selecting this node okay and one more coupling and selecting this point and node region and okay so we finish here uh, we finish and in the loot we can first uh, ask the boundary condition in initial 
<coughs> initial and we're going to give the displacement and using that uh, reaction points these two and I'm going to give fixed fixed and the second is I'm going to give in the pushover in the pushover called push push over and giving the, this displacement and so the maximum uh, in the Y is about to be uh, 50 millimeter so very small uh, we also can give some amplitude but it's no need uh, in this one 50 millimeter we push it now uh, it's time to apply the polarity so let me uh, uh, so now we have uh, 100,000 Newton or 100 kilonewton divided by uh, this is the area uh, 2000 equal uh, 200 by 200 so this is the area and this is the pressure that I should give so equal this one uh, divide uh, divided by this one okay this one oh uh, this in should be shouldn't be here so I'm gonna go here 2.5 amigo posco so I have to apply in this surface and I can go to here called GV in the second time pause and no pressure and I selected this surface and this surface so the total amount is 2.5 the amount of load we will uh, extract that should be uh, 100 kilonewton uh, in total uh, so that's all and we're gonna go to the mesh and we want to create mesh let me give a mesh uh, about 50 this is a nice mesh okay. and the second is we have to give the rebar mesh and 200 so uh, here we should uh, define the type of elements otherwise you will get error so this is thrust you should define thrust beam 200 and here and thrust mm, frame reward straps uh, 200 and Thrust element and the last one is beam uh, 200 is just uh, we want one element and here is the element type so we finished and we can assembly and see and we can go to the job we want to call it RC frame submitted now it's starting uh, to run and we want to check or monitor if there is an error yeah it's already error there oh it's called uh, this number emitted element do not lie in any host element so far so the embedded region has problem so we should go to back to the here and in the interaction interaction so I should go to uh, let me go here and just frame uh, replace and then I want to bring all these things Add. so again I go back here and remove this one and now I want to call my embed so embed the first one embedded region 
selecting this one and then the second one is going to be all model so this time there is no error submit it <coughs> uh, sometimes uh, uh, because uh, because of some uh, we used uh, that uh, <coughs> remove in assembly so we couldn't see just there was a uh, now it's working yeah it's working and the uh, gravity load is applied to the concrete and here is the finished first step and the second step is will start so just after I finish we will discuss about the result now the analysis completed after uh, let's see it's about one two two and almost uh, one hours uh, let me go to the result so this is the result and I'm going to uh, here is the one mistress uh, composite uh, rebars and also steel so uh, I'm going to uh, the first thing I'm going to show the compressive strength so there is zero and uh, tension so this is the tension uh, damage which usually damage this area and this joints these joints and also the bottom of the column uh, we can go to see the uh, let me uh, here and just go to rebar remove this uh, part and frame just going to add the frame so this is the frame and I'm going to see the uh, one mistress here so the main damage is mostly in the beam column joint and the displacement and we can go to displacement and here's the displacement at the top of the structure so uh, first let me uh, get the output which we previously defined called the reaction force so we want to uh, get them and uh, force reaction and this is two reaction force and I should uh, sum them uh, this is the sum of the this is one uh, one um, part and I'm going to copy this and put in here and the second one is going to be uh, this one and the end of the copy and copy uh, equal uh, equal and uh, this plus this one uh, this is it so I'm going to call uh, we already have this one and so we applied in each column this one so totally we have 200 so it's become 199 so exactly the uh, reaction force is equal to 100% to the giving actual load or gravity load so this is the correct this work is correct and the second is we want to create the uh, displacement with the ref1 or shear force and here is the curve and we're going to create a operation operation and we're going to call combine and this is u1 should be x and rf should be y then we save it called uh, push over curve and here is i'm going to plot this push over curve and here is the response uh, it's about uh, 40 kilo newtons or 40,000 newton force and the displacement is about uh, 4.5 uh, millimeter uh, this is the pushover curve so you can see the behavior and this is elastic region and then uh, some yielding as occurred on the concrete and then going to concrete damaged totally here and then the steel damage and then we can see again the ultimate uh, strength of the uh, uh, the steel is utilized so like this you can see the behavior but uh, there is no deterioration to end 
to show the structure is totally collapsed or back up. Uh, so this is the end of the tutorial. If you have any question, please put it in the comment and I will find time to answer you. See you next time. Uh, I should say there is one mistake that's U2. We are not expecting that U2. That should be U1 in this direction. If I go back to here and I didn't uh, in the time history output, I didn't check uh, I didn't check U1 uh, here in this one I checked U2. So instead you can check U1. But I can go to back to uh, job uh, results and this time I can create here and uh, call time history output and I want to select that unique nodal and here I want to call new set and I want to get this one displacement and I should select what I want RDF1 including uh, U1 so now I can get that what I want now this is the uh, pushover curve which has uh, we can go here is uh, u1 and here is u2 in the previous one was u2 so i'm going to delete that one and again i'm going to create a uh, combine operate and here and this one this one you know save it and call push over plot this pushover so here is the pushover curve exactly what we expect because the displacement we giving is about uh, 50 millimeter so this is the behavior so in case you seems yeah it's exactly the uh, real behavior of the concrete with reinforcement and one more thing let me uh, show you the uh, stress strain and here i want to remove the concrete to see elements uh, parts and frame this frame and i'm gonna uh, remove it and you can see the beam column so mostly in this joint his uh, effect or impact is very high you can see the yield part is in this two location uh, in the bottom as well so uh, this is the end of the tutorial if you have any question please put it in the comment and i will find time to answer you see you next time